Welcome back to The Manor. Julian McBain here, and we are here with Easter Mayhem. So you're probably wondering about a few differences to the way we're doing things. And you've probably already noticed the audio quality difference. <clears throat> and you can tell I'm scrolling through what the, the mission parameters are. You're free to read that on your own. Normally, I would read it to you because I would be recording this as I'm playing. However, I decided to do try something different this time around. And what I've done is I'm actually creating this video project in three parts. And I'm going to get into how that whole mechanics thing works and why I decided to do that uh, in just a couple of minutes. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the manor. Please take a moment and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. Also, please consider going to patreon.com slash Julian McBain if you want to support my work. If you do, you'll get exclusive content. Uh, I believe I put out from March, it was the Boneworks Backstage Part 1. It goes through a lot of the parts of Bone, the Boneworks Raw video that I created that I did not put out on the final project. So you'll be able to see some of the stuff that happened off screen when I had to cut things out. I also went through some favorite parts and just kind of added commentary. So if you become a patron, there's only the $5 tier that is available to you as a patron. All right. <clears throat> so here we are on Easter Mayhem. And I'm a huge fan of Mayhem. I've always been a huge fan of Mayhem. There's so much that you can you can just like barrel through. You can just grind out skills during Mayhem, which is why it's so much fun. And so every year I try to spend time in Mayhem. The problem with Mayhem is Mayhem can get very expensive, particularly if you choose the wrong tier, if you're not set up for it, if you're not ready for it. And if you're a, a, a recorder, if you're a content creator like I am, then oftentimes the best times on your Mayhem are when you're not recording. Almost universally, that's the case. And so we decide to try things a little bit different. And so in the following half hour or so I'm going to go through what I decided to do for this mayhem and for the next series of videos going forward as we get through mayhem so that I can let you know why the format of mayhem is the way it is. Let's get started. All right so for this mayhem here's what we are doing different. In past mayhems I have grabbed segments of video as I play when I needed to record the video for my weekly content and the benefit to that is is that it's all raw it's all random you never know what's going to happen i'm talking when globals pop up it's a surprise it's awesome it's fun and because of the way mayhem works you can just grind it out and talk about whatever you want and i really enjoy doing that i think it's one of the one of the best features of entropia universe here's the drawback Inevitably, the best features of your mayhem will be when you're not recording. And all kinds of interesting little things can pop up. Glitches could pop up, which thankfully, because Mindark has spent a lot of time on this, it's not very common. Um, you might have to, you might get interrupted, you might have to pause something. Life happens. If you, and, and that can ruin the video, especially if you do straight raw video like I did for the first four years of my content creation. And so... For this one, we're going to do an experiment, and I want to know what you think of it. So please, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Like, dislike. If you dislike, let me know what you didn't like about it so that I can improve the content that I give you. Because realistically, that's what I'm here for is to entertain you. Because here's what I've decided to do, and I'm going to go step by step with what this process is so that you can go through and look at it and understand the difference between just recording straight raw and the video edits that are being put out now. So previous to this year, all of the video put out was raw. And I mean, the early videos, there wasn't even tile changes using OBS. That's relatively new. That was last year's addition to everything. And, I, and it really picked up the quality of the content being put out, in my opinion. And I got a lot of compliments for it, which is why I say that. And you all seem to appreciate it, which is why you continue to watch. But it wasn't enough. And so for this mayhem, in order to capture all the important pieces, here's what we're doing. The entirety of mayhem is being recorded, no matter how many hours it takes. As of the, the 
recording of this voice over, which we're going to get into the next layer here in just a minute, there has been a roughly five-ish hours of Mayhem content recorded. Okay. Of that time, roughly 30 minutes of the first four, three, three hours has been compressed into, the, into the, these 30 minutes. And what that does is it allows me to pull the, the fun stuff out of what is a longer grind. A lot of you come here for the grind. I can totally appreciate that. Five hours of raw grind video, trying to come up with topics to talk about for all of that time, it's a non-starter. Most of us watch something when we grind out things like mayhem. And if you don't, it surprises me. I know that there are a lot of people who manage to play EU when they're at work because they've got downtime. Honestly, with the job that I have, I could probably manage to do the same thing if I was able to have a system capable of handling EU at my regular job. If I worked remotely, on the times I have worked remotely, I know for a fact I could get away with playing EU on the side while I'm working. Because sometimes that's something that there's a lot of downtime on. I'm blessed to have a job where I can do that. Instead, I play Star Trek Fleet Command in between customers and in between work, which don't get me wrong. It's not like I spend a huge amount of time playing Star Trek Fleet Command when I'm working. I certainly earn my paycheck. But in those two, three minute downtimes between projects, you just check on it, you hit a couple buttons, you go back to work. Entropia Universe is not much different from that because of the way it's designed. You can do things like sweat mobs. If you're swunting, you're only shooting a mob once every five to 10 minutes. You can, you know, tab click tab click and then just auto shoots and that's the benefit to a game like entropia universe it's very similar to mobile games in that way where you only have to do a couple taps here and there you're good to go for the next half hour that being said it is more complicated and when you're doing things like mayhem you have these huge spans of time that you have to deal with and so instead what we're doing is i've cut the mic for all of the mayhem content being ground out. It's strictly coming through my computer speakers. There's no mic at all, no face cam, which will be back once we're back on Monria. And so we're just gonna grind out robots. What we're gonna do instead is we have compressed all of this time into half hour segments. And there's gonna be at least one segment per rank of this mayhem. There's 10 ranks. There's going to be at least 10 videos. Whether it'll stick to the two videos per week, I haven't decided yet. That depends. And there might be whole stages that are skipped just for time's sake. But this mayhem lasts a full month. And mayhem is important to a lot of people. And so I want to be able to put this on display. So that's what we're going to do. And then for the second layer of this, as we move into out of getting the raw video out, that's when we go into the editing software. And that's, I, I use Wondershare Filmora. And we're going to get into what that constitutes here right now. Okay, so once we have loaded the raw video into Wondershare Filmora, which this one was recorded over three separate segments, we plug in that, that we plug them into the software in order. And then what I do is I go through and I find all of the fun parts or the best parts of the video. And I do this with Boneworks too. This is basically how we, we go through all of this and trim out the pieces that become overwrought or they're just, you know, you're stuck or if you had to pause and walk away for a few minutes, which does happen, especially during uh, Mayhem, where you're doing these hugely long segments. Uh, as an example, the day of, of doing this editing is Saturday. The raw video was recorded over the Thursday, Friday period. Uh, no, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday. It doesn't matter. There were three video segments and I believe it was over Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And of them, there was four hours worth of video recorded. Well, mashing four hours of video into 30 minutes takes time. And so what you do is you go through, you cut things out, Find the important stuff. You know, you the boss fights with the warlocks. You want to find any globals that popped up, any interesting things that might have cropped up. You take note of it, kind of where it happened. 
And like this is an 1803 ped drop. That's a really good drop. Some of them are over 30 ped. You want to kind of clue in on that and make sure you've got what you need in order to make the videos interesting. And so the first thing you do is you load all of the parts and you find the parts that you want to include in the 30 minute video and you trim out the stuff in the middle. And after that, you have to add transitions and transitions really kind of help to blend things together. That way there's no jump cuts. With Entropia Universe, you could get away with, especially something with Mayhem, not having transitions in a lot of cases because one, a lot of people watch Entropia Universe more like a podcast. And so with that, they just listen to what the person talking is saying. I can appreciate that. I do a lot of that too, particularly when I'm listening to like Serial Overdrive or Scotty C93. Both fantastic creators, by the way. Go check them out. I know that Serial doesn't do a lot of Entropia Universe content anymore, but if you look at his Entropia Universe content, all of it's really valuable. And of course, Scotty puts out great content all the time, so go check him out as well. Uh, but you go through, you you find all of the pieces, you add in the, the, the stock pop-ups, the call-outs, like as you might have noticed in some of the early edited videos that I've started doing like on Monrium, when a global pops up, I've got a call-out for that. You'll see those coming up later in this video. You know, spoiler warning, there are globals coming. But the fact is you go through, you have the call-outs, and then you come back and you start the next layer. The next layer, of course, is the voiceover. And you'll notice that the quality of, of audio for what this video is, or not necessarily the quality, the sound of this audio is different from other videos I've done. And you may have noticed it in some of the Boneworks edits, particularly if you watch the back room edit or the, the backstage edit. And that's because this is an added voiceover. And so voiceovers are going to, by definition, sound different from raw video because it's uh, an audio layer that's been laid on top of existing audio. Unlike in most cases, we have left the project audio, so the, the sound of the sword slashing intact. I did turn it up as far as I could to make sure you could hear it. But even then, that doesn't guarantee that's going to happen. This is all experimental, and this is a learning process for me as much as it is for you learning what not learning, but you seeing the differences in how the process will work. So we then record the voiceover and the voiceover is what we're doing here. For this video, it's mostly gonna be explanation as to what to expect for Mayhem this year, or at least for Easter. And again, please comment, let me know what you think of this and how you feel it might be beneficial or not so beneficial, how it's different. Even all of the videos that have happened since I went to Monrea and started editing, I know I've added some B-Real stuff, cut some stuff in. I'd love to have your opinions on it because this is all new. And without that information, I'm not gonna have anything to work with. So all of that tells me how this is working for you. So, okay, we get, we get to the voiceovers, we do the voiceover. And then once the voiceover is done, we go back and we have to start adding the video visual um like the captions so we've already done the call outs for the globals and stuff like that the easy to do stuff but that doesn't mean that it's complete there's still more to do one of the things you have to do once you've figured out the audio portion you do the voiceovers you have to review everything and make sure that it all lines up properly and in fact at the end of the last segment of voiceover, and I'm not even sure you can hear the transitions, although you probably can. I actually had to cut a piece of it because there was a, a segment of video I had meant to cut out that did not get cut out when it was supposed to. So I had to go back, I had to cut that piece of video out, edit it to things back together so that it worked together. I cut off a piece of the last segment of audio because it was my reaction to the mistake that I made. And now I'm recording this. But then after you do all of the voice recording, you have to go back and you add in any captions or callouts that you want to make. And for this video, there likely aren't going to be a lot of them because this is more an explanation of the video editing process, just so you're aware of what I go through as I put through this together, as I'm learning how to do this, this art. And as a non-artistic person, I'm here to tell you, not the easiest thing in the world. Heh, <laughs> not at all. And, uh, so 
this has been quite interesting. So, with all of this, and I, I'm not even sure if you can hear the people in the background through my through my door. That's how new this is to me. There's so like in the in the Monria videos, you'll see where I put up certain elements will pop up like when we're talking about the, the various mobs on Monria, all the things that we're dealing with there. It's a very it, it's a lot of fun to do. You add it all in. Uh, someone who's really good at that particular type of art is the Russian Badger. Like seriously, if you watch any one of his videos, of which he has many, he captions literally everything in his shows or in, in his videos. I can't imagine the amount of time it takes him. It's, it, it's no wonder he only puts out like one video a month. He captures a shitload of raw video. He's got his buds on there. It's pure chaos. And it's hilarious. Like, seriously, especially his Rainbow Six videos. Hilarious. But he captions every freaking word said. And everyone on his team has a different colored caption so you know who's talking. So, like, if you've got Heavenly saying something, you've got Grouse saying something, they're both going to be on there. They're different colored captions. You know exactly who's talking, even if you can't hear. Because it's color-coded. And so that takes a lot of work. You're... Unfortunately, I don't have the time to be doing that. <laughs> but it is it is a lot of fun. So that's the next layer of things you do. You have to add in the, the, the effects, the features, the dissolves. Like whenever I go between segments or I try to mash things together, like we've got the Warlock here. We're fighting the Warlock. The boss fights are the most, probably the, the most or the second most important part of a Mayhem video because they're the hardest mob in the area. You really want to show these more epic battles. And then you go to the dissolve once that's over and we're back to regular video. You have to make sure those are all parsed correctly, they're all put in correctly. Because if you don't, you can actually really wreck the effect of the video. And that takes some time to figure out. Thankfully, when it comes to that sort of thing, I have done enough work in my past where I can kind of make an educated guess as to where to put those. That doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. And so, just making sure those are in there, testing it over and over and over again to make sure that the video shows what you want it to show is vitally important to the video. Global! 112 ped. Thank you, Mindark. And so, and just like that, the call out there, you've got the amount on the bottom. If you go back, you'll see where it says global in the big center and the amount of the global underneath it. And for this segment of video, there's a number of globals that are going to pop up. This all happened within 10 minutes of each other. I was actually shocked because I'd been three plus hours in with no globals at all. And I was concerned because I'm like, oh my god, this is going to kill my wallet. Real cash economy game, right? So th that's important. And throughout this entire segment, this entire video, I'm pretty much... Uh, for the first half, I was wearing not only my ghost armor, but I finally picked up the 5B plates. And it did affect the amount of de of uh, decay on the that had to be paid out after each segment. So that got really worrisome. But after some experimentation, the total amount of decay difference between wearing the plates and not wearing the plates was less than 5 ped for an hour worth of mayhem. So negligible absolutely negligible for those of you playing the home game less than 50 cents usd and if you're getting globals on the regular like you will when you're playing at this level you know yeah they're sparse out it took three hours to get a global and then i got a number of them in succession all of which you're going to be seeing in this video segment the first one you just saw it, it will it will make up for it it will make up for it if you're playing the way you're supposed to play now if you're playing way out of level of course you're not going to get the globals because you're you're being dumb. You got to know what your your area of play is going to be. So for me, I play at mayhem level 4. I could probably play at mayhem level 5. I'm a little reluctant to jump up to that level yet because I feel that I would lose just a little bit of my efficiency. By summer mayhem, I probably will try level 5. I might even try for the silver level prizes depending on what my schedule looks like because the silver level prizes it's just that next level up right 
It's that much harder. It's got that much cooler of an item. Now, of course, the items themselves, you go from bronze to silver. It's just the color of the product. Eventually, I'd love to get that highest level one. I don't remember off the top of my head what they're called. But they were red, and they were just awesome looking. Just awesome looking. But you've got to be able to, to punch out the points. And in order to do that, you can do it at any level. But you've got to have the time to do it. And unfortunately, that is something I do not have at this point in time. And so that's just something you have to you have to work with it. And so yeah, you've got the you've got all of these layers you have to work with. And so by far this video is the one I have spent probably the most time on for Entropia Universe. No, not probably. This is the one I've spent the most time on for Entropia Universe. The only ones I've spent more time on is the Boneworks series. And even then, it probably any one Boneworks video is only an hour worth of work. This one, you had all of the hours of raw video, which I don't really count because I'm watching Star Trek, okay? Not gonna lie, like last night, I'm recording raw video. I did three hours of mayhem. I'm watching Star Trek First Contact and Star Trek Insurrection because I'm that much of a nerd. Y'all can make fun of me, but that's my jam, okay? So, Global 100 Ped, thank you, Mindark. So that's how you get the raw video out. And then you go back and you have to kind of mash it all together. And so I started this project probably at 7 38 o'clock this morning. As of when this part of the voiceover is being recorded, it's almost 10. And I've taken maybe 20 minutes worth of breaks. Ah, no, that's not fair. It's probably closer to an hour because, you know, breakfast and shit like that. But you do have to make the time to do it. That's the point I'm saying, is if you want to make content like this, and I'm, this is for anyone who's contemplating becoming an Entropia Universe content creator. Number one, if you want to become an Entropia Universe content creator, put out content. Just make content, please. There aren't enough of us. There really aren't. The ones I can think of that are still regularly putting out content. So you've got, you've got Serial Overdrive, who doesn't put out a lot of Entropia Universe anymore. Great guy, great content. He's focused on Rust. Good for him. Lore Spade, same thing. Great guy, great content. He's focused on Fallout 76 because that's really become his jam. And I get it. You can only put out so much Entropia Universe content before you got to take a break. I've taken breaks before. I totally get it. Okay, fine. You've got Scotty C93, who's currently on Next Island putting out awesome content. Really can't recommend him enough. You've got Earn Ped with Stevie B. He puts out his content. Not really my jam, but that's his business, you know? He puts out the content he likes to put out. I'm totally behind him doing that. So, and I just realized that throughout this, I managed to mute the entire project. Okay, no, I didn't. False alarm. That's just for the effect of wonder share. It does mean I'm going to have to go back and check some other projects I did to make sure that the audio is muted in the core project, but apparently it doesn't actually happen when you're doing this part of it. Uh, and this is the learning process I'm talking about. Like, I thought I'd screwed up majorly, thought I'd have to record the last eight minutes of voiceover over again. It turns out I don't. And for those of you playing the home game, this voiceover was actually recorded in multiple segments. And this is one of the benefits to doing things like this because you can record multiple segments. You do soft transitions. You're able to work with the video. It's kind of smooth. It works really well. This is why this is so much fun because you get to play with how you do things. You get to better understand what you're putting out and how you're putting it out and how people will consume it. And you're going to make mistakes. If you're planning on becoming an Entropia Universe stre uh, either streamer or content creator, just accept one thing. Global 211 ped. Thank you, Mindark. That was that was the biggest one of the day, by the way. Uh, if, if you're going to be a content creator for Entropia Universe or anything, just understand you're going to make mistakes. Accept the fact that you're going to make mistakes because that's life. Okay, please continue. Please do it anyway. Put out the content, make the mistakes, have the guts to do things badly. Okay, have the guts to do things badly because that's the only way you end up getting good at things. Am I terrific at making content? No. How do I know this? I've only got 703 subscribers. Am I getting better at it? Yes. It's taken me four years to kind of hone this craft and I'm still only so so at it. I'm okay with that. Okay. I specialize in certain things. To me, this is a hobby. It's a lot of fun. There are people who make a living off of this 
and they're fantastic at it. Good for them. I wish them all the best. I'm gonna continue doing what I do, and if you want to give this a shot, I 110% encourage you to do so, and don't give up. Don't give up, because that's how you make these things happen. And uh, it's worth it, it's a lot of fun. And sometimes you're gonna need to take breaks, do it. But it is a lot of fun. Okay, we are coming up to the end of our time. So with that, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time. So make sure you subscribe. And as always, I really wanna, I, I really appreciate your support and all of my patrons, the support of all of my patrons, and we will see you in the next one.